So you want to produce music on Linux and you want to use the native instruments, VSTs. Normally installing Windows VSTs on Linux is pretty easy, but for native instruments in particular, the process is a little bit more involved. And I am going to show you that today because I found that there really aren't any solid guides on the internet that really make this simple. So I'm going to take you through the steps that I took to get this up and running and also tell you about some of the troubles I ran into on the way. Hopefully you will find this informative and helpful and we will jump right in. So if you're doing music production on Linux, you've probably heard of Wine and Yawbridge. So I may do different videos on these, but they're pretty well documented on the internet, especially Yawbridge. The GitHub page here explains really well what it all works with and how to build it, how to install it on whichever Linux system you're using. Uh, basically, Wine is your Windows emulator. I know it's the acronym is Wine is not an emulator, but for for our purposes here, it's emulating Windows. And then Yawbridge is your application to get these Windows VSTs to run smoothly in whichever DAW you decide to use on Linux. Uh, so if you're doing anything with Windows VSTs on Linux, you're going to know about these two programs. Um, again, there's already great videos on YouTube about how to get these set up. Might make one of my own at some point, but these are here. Go get them. Next thing we want to grab, I don't know why I opened a new window for that. Bring that back in here. Uh, we'll need the native access legacy installer. So the current native instruments installer is called native access Two. Uh, if you were running windows, this would be working smoothly for whatever reason, native access Two uses some sort of component that isn't compatible with wine. And so you'll install. If, if you do what I did my first time around, you'll install Native Access 2 and you'll open it and you'll realize that it can't fetch some dependency that it needs, that normally it would be able to get just fine, but through Wine on Linux, it cannot do that. Um, so you're gonna need to get the Native Access 1.14.1 installer for Windows 7 or 8, and that should work fine. I will say though, my first time around, I kind of kind of screwed this up. I had installed Native Access 2, saw it didn't work, and then I attempted to install Native Access 114. If you install Native Access 114 with the Native Access 2 files on your system, the it, it will not work. You'll get like a JavaScript error, and the program will not run. So if you if you do that and you have these two conflicting versions what you can do you can go into your home directory and enter your dot wine folder and you'll want to navigate with drive c program files you want to get to that native instruments folder and you can just delete that and then just install native access 114.1 and that should run pretty smoothly right there. I just wanted to bring that up because that's an issue I came across probably due to my own ignorance, but it is what it is. So you install native access through, I should show this too, but when you download native access 114, you just right click it in your file manager and you'll open it with the wine windows program loader. I assume if you've used Wine before, you already knew that, but it doesn't hurt to bring that up here. Uh, so once you open the Native Access Installer, what you'll want to do is, well, first of all, you should log in and it will show you all of the plugins that you have purchased. I have the complete 14 set in addition to some other libraries here. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these say failed by them. Uh, what basically happens here is you'll hit the install all button and it will download everything to your system. Uh, some of the things will work right away. So like battery four right here, or some of these are libraries I've installed, but like contact seven, like 
these will both install right away. Um, and the reason for that is that these are just, just regular pieces of Windows software. They're just regular VST plugins. They don't install without a hitch. I should mention too, if you're using Yabridge, you will want to type in Yabridge CTL sync. You'll do this every time after you install a VST plugin. Um, as you can see, I've already got mine all set up here. Um, again, if you're using Windows VSTs on Linux, this is something you'll be using quite frequently uh, in addition to refreshing your plugin directory on whichever DAW you choose. Um, now, the reason that a lot of these libraries that you see in not installed, the reason why a lot of these failed is the way that Native Instruments installs them for like, let's say, we'll grab hybrid keys, for example. Hybrid keys is a contact library. The way that Native Instruments installs that is you hit install here and it downloads an ISO file for the program. And normally if you were running native access on Windows, the application would mount the ISO file for hybrid keys as if it was like a CD drive. And it would, inst it would run the install script from that CD drive and install the program to your system. Because we're running in Wine and because we're on Linux, I don't know what causes this, but the native access is not able to find the CD drive and it is not able to run the installer. However, there is a fix for this. And in the case of having Contact 14, this is a repetitive process you're gonna be doing over and over, but it will be worth it for a reason I will explain shortly. So what you'll want to do is you'll go to your downloads folder and you'll see all these ISO files here. These are all of the contact libraries and I think some reactor stuff too that were downloaded through native access and they are conveniently here in downloads because when you set up Wine, it links the drive C, the, the simulated drive C folder, it links the home folder over to your local Linux home folder, which is really nice because then all these ISOs are right here. So I did some digging online. I found a fix, a little bash script on the Linux musicians forums, and I'll go over what this does really quick. This is going to mount these ISO files to your CD-ROM drive. So I'll, I'll just take this command piece by piece. So sudo, you're going to need root access for this. So you're going to need to know your administration password. Uh, mount is the command we're going to use to mount this. There's some flags here that say dash T UDF. I don't know what these do and I don't know what the dash O unhide does over here, but that if you don't have these, the install process will not work. In between those, we have our plugin.iso. This is obviously going to be replaced with whatever your ISO file is called and the directory path to it. And at the very end of the command here is the place we're mounting to, which is going to be slash mnt slash cd-rom. Depending on how your distro does things and depending on if you have a CD drive, this mnt slash cd-rom folder might not exist um, if we do ls slash mnt in the terminal here you will see this folder is here um, that is because i have created it uh, if you don't have that folder in mnt you're going to do it's actually going to be sudo make dir make directory slash mnt slash cd-rom and that will create the folder that you need for the next step in this process here. So now that we got that all kind of explained, I'm going to copy this command here into our terminal. And what did we say? We were using hybrid keys. So we're going to go over to the plugin ISO. And then it was in our downloads folder. So we're going to type downloads. Again, this is between the 
dash T U D F and dash O unhide is where you're going to put your plugin ISO. So slash downloads, hybrid keys, and we're going to hit enter on this command. It's going to ask for your root password. So you want to type that in right now. And it's going to say that the source is write protected and it's read only uh, because we're just reading the files off of the disk and installing them onto our local hard drive. This is perfectly fine. So what you'll do now is you're going to open up your file browser. In my case, it's Dolphin on KDE. And you're going to click on your, your ISO here. And it will have the EXE installer. I'm just going to right click that and hit open with Wine Windows Program Loader. So that's going to open up this little Windows install wizard. Pretty straightforward stuff accept the license terms and it's going to show you right here the directory that this is going to so C right here is going to be that drive C folder in dot wine which is in your home directory so we're going to open that back up um, you can change this to wherever you want it to go um, we can just hit next and it's going to confirm the information we just gave it. We'll hit next. And it's going to load all that data off the ISO into the directory where it's going to be installed. We'll give that a moment here. And that has been completed successfully. The next thing we're going to want to do is go back into native access and you're going to want to hit your refresh button this just allows for native access to verify that the iso has been installed legitimately um if if you if you did not refresh this the contact library when you open it would have like a little red icon that says demo um, and I, I don't really know what difference that would make, but I imagine you would want it to not be in demo mode because you have legitimately purchased the product in question. So let's see. So we're in our installed products here. Uh, this failed notification will still show up here. Um, this will just clear whenever you reopen native access. Um, it's still just showing this from when we downloaded it earlier but it has in fact installed successfully and to demonstrate that we will open up bitwig which is my daw of choice you may be using reaper or ardor or any any number of daws really any of the ones on windows probably will work fine on linux albeit with a little bit of tweaking um i've chosen bitwig here because it does what I want it to do when it runs natively. So we'll start up a new project here and we will load up contact. Uh, one thing I'm gonna mention, through my testing, I noticed that if you use just regular contact here, and we'll open that up right now, it'll recognize the libraries right away and you won't have to really do anything. If instead you use contact seven, I'm gonna open that up right now too. Give it a moment to load. So for whatever reason, the libraries don't show up automatically in contact seven on Linux. Don't entirely know why that is, but we can load our libraries by going to this little save icon here and then hit the load button and then you want to navigate to my computer see users public just wherever you installed the program to the documents and hybrid keys and then go into your instruments folder 
and some of these libraries will have two different versions either 1.0 or 2.0 whichever one you want to run it, uh, you just click that and hit open and then if everything went according to plan you have your VST up here and as you will be able to hear in a second I just want to actually connect the DAW to OBS but as you can hear, works like a charm, gives you audio. And that is how you install contact libraries and other native instruments software on your Linux distribution. I hope this video has proved helpful. I may try to do a couple other tutorials in the future just showing kind of how my setup works on Linux and why I've made some of the some of the decisions I have with software picks and whatnot. Um, so be on the lookout for that. If that is of any interest, I might try to do that in the future. And thank you for watching this video and yeah, hope hope it hope it helped you and hope you find the information here useful. Thanks.